I just found a recipe for century eggs, and I'm about to make it everybody's problem. I'm Spike. Uh, I have a new computer. I'm Kel. <laughs> I'm Amanda. I watched a live stream to get a Warframe drop. <laughs> and we have a uh, guest. Yes. Hi, I'm I'm John, and I'm I'm the guest. Okay. Yay! Thank you for joining us for this stream, John. I am John, please uh, tell folks um, what your comic is through Iron Circus. Oh, God. <laughs> They're unfamiliar. I'm so bad at this. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I have done two books with Iron Circus. One is about teenage gay stuff, and the other one is about drugs. Yay! Um, Yay! <laughs> So the question is, why hasn't everyone here already bought several copies and distributed them as presents to everyone they know? Because they're amazing and I love them. Because I'm broke. Okay, fair enough. Thank okay. you. Thank you yeah. for acknowledging. That's a lot of my fan base. <laughs> People can't afford comic books. Yeah. John, did you know you are one of the artists I like found online and I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, that's exactly kind of the remit of Iron Circus to like publish stuff like this, like cool, weird stuff like this. I didn't, I did not know that. It's true. You, the uh, first book how, I was published... it actually that creepy sounding when you went, oh yeah. <laughs> well, I like weird shit and yes. I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of weird shit. And Wait, do I make weird shit? You I definitely didn't... make weird shit. It's super this is every, right. Everyone who is published by Iron Circus makes weird shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Myself this is like, included. Yeah, we are not the cool kids table. We are not in the normal kids table. We're not the nerd table. We're I, we're, okay. we're the people under the bleachers who like are taking taking turns like snorting pop rocks, and getting what? nosebleeds. Those were always my people for sure. Spock, <laughs> I was at the Yu-Gi-Oh table. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to practice Yu Yu-Gi-Oh erasure. Thank you. Forgive me. <laughs> but John, you're in New York, aren't you? Or I, I am, yeah. Sorry about uh, that. Uh, I've how's, been seeing. How's breathing? Yeah, how's breathing going breathing for you today? It's fine. So, I I don't know if I need to unpack this at length. I'm at a residency upstate, right? Oh, okay. Oh, so um, it's already past you. It's it not in, like in New York City. Okay. It's in New York State. Okay. So I'm on the Hudson, but the like I haven't I haven't gone outside in a while. Yeah. That oh, sounds like some cartoonish shit right there. No, I know. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I hadn't gone outside in a while, and now I have no idea when my car got hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did have some <laughs> car issues recently. It got one of your taillights, didn't it? Yeah. I, after examining the plastic left from the other car, because I was trying to figure out if I could figure out the make and model, I realized it's their taillights, and I live on a one-way street. Mm -hmm. So they had to back into me. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. Yeah. You you were parked and yes. they like they took out your light. My tail light, yeah. Yeah. And it sucks. I mean it's it's just cosmetic damage. I can replace it for like seventy dollars, but still. Yeah. But still. My car's still. still street legal and it was the same side of my car that already got wrecked by another car. So <laughs> you're just winning and winning and you just stay winning is what I you're mean, saying. I mean, as long as the car Who's functions. A Yes. It's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But you're not in New York right now. New York City right now. You're in New York State. So my only information on what's going on in New York right now is via the city and the sky is like apocalypse orange. Mm -hmm. and do you usually live in New York City or do you just live in New York State? Uh-oh, John, you there? That's too much information. Oh, sorry. <laughs> What are you, a cop? Like, <laughs> Maybe. One of, I undisclosed one of the five boroughs. But yeah, okay. no, I've been getting a lot of messages from people. Like, And yeah, the sky is like neon orange out there. Yeah, yeah, pretty bad. It's, it's I'm so in Chicago, so it's pretty much missed us. So For uh, now. For now. For now. <laughs> yeah, no, we could definitely partake of, of the smog monster for sure if mm -hmm. the wind changes. But it's mostly just... A thing about Chicago, real quick, is um, it's like the stepchild in the American megacity family. So we 
are constantly being ignored in favor of LA and New York City. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Chicagoans take it kind of personally where, you know, people from other countries, they can tell you about New York and they can tell you about LA. But if you ask them about Chicago, one of two things happen, their eyes glaze over and they, they can't tell you anything or they go Al Capone and that's it. And so we're, we're bitter. So that's, when things, <laughs> if they care about comedy, they'll have opinions. Um, if they, that's true. That's true. And like, I feel this is not to offend any Canadians listening, but a, a thing I noticed growing up is that if anybody was Canadian and by anybody, I mean like a famous person. Oh, the Canadians were on top of that. They knew that right away. It would be interjected into conversation because I had a lot of Canadian cousins. So we would be talking about Jim Carrey. And the first thing out of their mouth every time was like, he's Canadian. And it actually got to the point where it was kind of obnoxious. So now whenever something like that happens in Hollywood and I know they're from like second city, you know what I mean? If, if they had some kind of basis in Chicago, I, I hold myself back from being just, so you know, that started in Chicago. Yeah. That's a Chicago thing. Oh, him. Yeah. Yeah. He was down. He was down in Chicago. He, he was definitely in second city for a while. And it's like, shut up. No one cares. Some people care. Some people care. That's fair. I don't. Well, Amanda, there's not a lot you care about except your cat. <gasps> I care about many things. How dare you? Since when? Since always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You care about, like, made uniforms and your cat. And puppets. And, and, and bubble baths. And, and magical like girls. It. And magical. <laughs> and clay. And clay. Okay. And rats. Okay. <laughs> and sewing. <laughs> You have all the old lady hobbies. Yeah, like rats. <laughs> like rats and sewing. Costumes. Magical girls. I'm offended. You should be. Kel, you are uncharacteristically quiet this time I'm around. I'm trying to fix my computer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Because it's like it's a me and Amanda show. And it's just yeah. like, there's nothing over there. Uh, it's. There's something about like new Macs don't like the program Macs that I was like using to do audio. Uh, well, next so. time you'll remember to do some troubleshooting before the show launches. Extremely Everything unprofessional. Everything else was working. Extremely um, unprofessional. Extremely unprofessional. Yeah. John, how closely can I interrogate you? I mean, do what you got to do, you know. <laughs> If it gets weird, I can just shut my laptop. It's fine. True. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about the books you put out through Iron Circus, if that is okay. It's yeah. It's that seems. Okay. Yeah. The very yeah. first one was the Lonesome Era, and I love that one very much. Thank you. Yeah. For folks who haven't read it, the Lonesome Era is about. Well, I called him a cat, but apparently that's flexible. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like species, like uh, like I'm uh, like so. Yeah, I guess we've never talked about. That. Yeah, on the back of the book, like when I got the like proof, it said he's a cat, mm -hmm. and oh, I guess he's a cat. Like I always thought of him <laughs> like a little dog or like even a coyote or something. Really, <laughs> but it was like cat, and I was like, that's fine. Like it's yeah. just like some ears and a nose, like whatever. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It, it should be noted here that the characters in pretty much all of John's work are kind of like lackadaisy. They're basically little anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic. people, but mm -hmm. importantly, they don't seem to know it. So, like, mm -hmm. that's an important aspect. <laughs> like, it, it I doesn't mean, that's come an, up. That's a pretty classic cartoon thing. Like, yeah, goofy and stuff. Yeah, yeah they Bugs don't... Bunny knows he's a bunny. No one in Lonesome Era or Julian in Purgatory or any of other Ohio is for sale. Any of John's stuff. No, they are cute little cartoon animals, which I really like in conjunction with like the horrible things that happen in that book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, John's going to be in uh, fucking funny. Oh, good. And good, good, good. I, I, I still haven't like really nailed down a thing. I know the due date was like over a month ago. And it's I okay. We believe in you. Also, it's flexible. There's stuff going on, but we'll talk about it later. But also, Amanda, that was actually the announcement for the for the book. I think. Oh. But you just did right there. Oh, I don't care. Anyway, there's like oh, eight, there's eight people watching. <laughs> it's my publishing company, Amanda. Please. I didn't say what it was. 
I didn't yeah, say no what one, it was. No one knows what fucking funny is. Oh, uh, I think they'll be able to guess. Yeah? <laughs> anyway, John did a script that was extremely funny and still makes me laugh when I think about it. Okay. Well, thank you. It was the one with the I, box. But yeah. since we're going to stop talking about fucking funny stuff right now... Rude. My favorite thing, in Lonesome, rude. My favorite thing in Lonesome Era is there's a whole scene where the two main characters conspire to steal band merch, mm-hmm. and their plan to steal band merch is one of them already drank too much and feels kind of bad, so he goes, "I'll just go over there and throw up on the merch table, people." And in the horror and confusion, you just grab a shirt, okay? Mm-hmm. And I really like that part a lot. Like, oh, it's probably my favorite part of the book beyond before the leg breaking. I like the leg breaking a lot too, but I like I like the vomit part a lot too. And I was wondering if that was based on anything real. Uh, was it? No. Um, no. I mean, I've definitely vomited a lot, and I've stolen <laughs> stuff, but I've never <laughs> put two things together. What is the best thing you've ever stolen? Uh, when I was. In- when I was in high school, I worked at an office max. It's uh-huh. like a pulse, you know? Yeah. And um, we stole, it, I don't know if this quite qualifies as stealing, but we like built a fort in the back of the store in like all of these boxes, these like shipping boxes. And we had like an office chair back there and we had like a bunch of like snacks and like a whiteboard. And we like built our own little like, you know, like yeah. tree fort in the back of an office max. Like until a clubhouse. Like, hmm? like a clubhouse. It was like a clubhouse. Um so we didn't like take the merchandise out, but we definitely like used and destroyed it and made it, you know, un- unavailable for resale. Did you have when you were working retail, did your store have like the bin of damaged stuff that like you couldn't put out on the on the sales floor because it came kind of fucked up, but it was free and for anybody would... who worked there? Yeah. Oh no, no, you couldn't take it, oh. but you could smash it. Oh. Like, you could you could destroy it so that nobody else could have it. And that was like <laughs> a way to like get through the day it was like oh we're gonna go like destroy some returned printers or like some. <laughs> sounds like capitalism yeah no it really was it's but you know when you're like 17 you're not really thinking about the yeah makes me think of uh stories i've heard of people who work in grocery stores or restaurants or fast food places or something like that and when the food is left over, they are occasionally, not universally, it depends on managerial stuff, but they are instructed to bleach it or, mm-hmm. you know, stab any any bags so that any liquids inside leak out or dump mm-hmm. out any liquids because it's one day past the expiration date. And, you know, that food's still good, but mm-hmm. they can't put it in the dumpster because if they put it in the dumpster, the freegans will get it. And yeah. they don't want any dirty, filthy freegans around. Yeah, because those people are just potential customers. If they're not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. God, do, is freeganism still like a thing? Because I used yeah. to be all about that. I mean, they might not yeah, call it still, that, but it's, yeah, it was a thing yeah. before freegan. Freeganism as a concept was a thing before it was called freeganism, and it mm. continues. Yeah, but now it's got a name. Kind of the way crowdfunding was a thing before it was called that. And yeah, now it has but a that's name. what I'm saying. That's why it's still going. That's good to know. I've eaten donuts straight out of the garbage. <laughs> Am I alone in that? Anyone else? I mean, I don't like donuts that uh, much. So. I mm. have never eaten food out of the garbage. You're um, missing out. I have claimed I, food that was headed to the garbage. No, mine was in like, a black yeah, No, I, I eat it before it goes in the I mean, garbage. I, uh, I, I have eaten food that is expired. Um, I, worked at a, I worked at a Red Lobster for six years, so I was very uh, used to getting food before it was, like, thrown to hell. You've eaten out of the garbage, right, John? Uh, thank you for asking. No, I don't think so. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, it's, I think it's something everybody should experience at least once. I mean, what kind of donuts? Like a Dunkin' Donut or something? I'll like... tell you this. I'm making it sound like way edgier than it really was. Was it What it basically was is there was a bakery in San Francisco. And they 
made a habit of carefully placing all the food that was like one day over being salable in a garbage bag and then putting that garbage bag on like a table out in front of the store with a sign that said free donuts. And the idea was anybody who was coming you home at the time from like garbage the bar, can. from like the bars or whatever, and they were, you know, all fucked up and <laughs> they just wanted something to eat. Uh, or even homeless people, whoever wanted True. them. Used, they were put in there like nice. They weren't like dumped, you know? They were like placed in their little bakery boxes. And yeah. I was there. I was there with a bunch of other cartoonists. Um, I don't know if this will mean anything to anyone here, but Frank and Becky were there too. Yay. And they work for Disney. So, you know, Disney artists, see yeah, the garbage. And we saw this. And one of the, the people garbage. who worked at the bakery was there. It's like, hey, we got free donuts. If you, you guys want free donuts? Are you in town you, for the convention? You, you want free donuts? You have and misrepresented we, these donuts as being Exactly. The I, I sound like way edgier. I just like, oh, yeah, the garbage. They, they they're they're not really, garbage donuts. And they were good. They were like long johns, like the long donuts with chocolate icing. I think stuff I've eaten and... trashier food than you, Spike. Oh, I've definitely eaten trashy food. Don't get me no, wrong. I mean, literally, like, in terms of its proximity to the garbage. <laughs> I ate garbage out of a Starbucks. That's That was on top of the dumpster. How about that? No. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about garbage food. <laughs> it's relatable content. Everyone eats out of the garbage. Good job. John. I've definitely <laughs> done the thing where someone, like, returns something and we have to, like, scrape it and get rid of it. And we've just, like, boxed it up and I've taken it home yeah i hear that's a decent sort of thing too when you're like a door dasher these days or a grub hub person like every once in a blue moon someone will just cancel on you and the next thing you know you've got like three pizzas and you're like oh mm -hmm. <laughs> I, um, I used to clean moon uh-oh you got uh, cut off there i think john uh, cut cut john you cut out for a bit um oh, yeah. used to clean what movie theaters oh okay. i think my internet might be a little dodgy um it could but also be yeah, your discord I... settings wait what it could also be your discord settings if your voice sensitivity is set too high no it, the internet here kind of sucks no I'm, I'm like in a house with 24 people oh. fighting the internet that'll do it um no but no, at the movie theater, if you leave a soda or a popcorn, um, chances are medium high that one of the people cleaning the theater will drink that soda or eat that. Oh I draw the line at sharing soda because I always think of like backwash, but I'd eat that shit out of someone's leftover popcorn. You know, I mean, if you, I, 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 I did not do this myself. I had like threads of i don't know self-preservation but you know you <laughs> think coupled or any like i want to go to waste did anything like super unbelievably mind-melting happen at the movie theater uh one time i saw like four girls walking out of a theater like crying and covered in pink goo oh and no right behind them was like this little boy carrying like this <laughs> oh he cut out again he cut out after you said carrying yeah like he had drank this entire giant milkshake and like projectile vomited <gasps> and then he oh. these girls were traumatized and he was just laughing his no <laughs> Oh, that's horrible! Yeah, oh there, was, there, was like a party. there were like eight. Oh, that's awful! <laughs> that Holy god! At at that job, I would be traumatized <laughs> by that too. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I've worked a lot of shit jobs. Is the moral of most of the stories? Yeah, that... understandable. What was the shittiest? One of those, probably the, oh, either god. the movie theater or Office Max. Oh, okay. Definitely. Yeah, for me, for me, I think my only the seat like the one job I would describe as like genuinely shitty. It wasn't because I stole so much. It was great. I, I worked at a, a Pearl Arts and Crafts, and mm. it was awesome. You can't whisper; it doesn't pick up well. <laughs> Sorry, it was awesome. I worked at a Pearl Arts and Crafts, and that's like where you worked as an artist when you were like young and huh. had no money, and. I asked about like, is there a box where like the free stuff goes? Because that's what we had. And 
it got to the point that if there was something you wanted, you just broke it <laughs> and you took it home. So a lot of times tubes of paint could be ridiculous amounts of money, especially if they were some rare pigment or, you know, lapis blue or something that was made with actual crushed lapis instead of just like a dye. And uh, we had a lot of painters that worked there and they would just regularly be like, oh, a new shipment of paint came in and they'd go over and they'd look for the nice tubes of paint and they just stick their finger underneath the labels and just pull the whole label off. It's like, well, we can't sell this. No one knows what it is. And they just put it in their bag. <laughs> and what they would do to try and stop us is they enacted a new rule that anything that was considered unsalable, un unable to go on the retail floor, it had to go in the public box in the break room where it had to stay there for 24 hours. So everyone except the person who found it could get a crack at it first. And if it was still there 24 hours later, the person who found it could keep it. But that didn't work. Easy, easy system to game though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's just, you know, worker solidarity. Like, yeah. I, I fucked happening... this up so I can take it at home. Uh, yeah. Don't well, take it. Uh... Yeah, what ended up happening is they would fuck it up. They would rip the labels off. And then they'd put a note on it, like a like a post-it. And it would just be all like, this belongs to Bill. Don't touch. And it would go <laughs> to the block. So it would still be there 24 hours later. So, and after that, they just, like, stopped trying to stop us and for the most part people had some level of restraint like some tiny level of restraint but then there's this one woman who uh she got her boyfriend to show up at the end of her shift and he backed he had a van and he oh. backed his van up to like the loading dock area and she just started loading furniture on it <laughs> and we, we sold like drafting tables and stuff and you know, nobody paid us enough to care. So we were like standing there watching and the managers are like, what, what is this? And she's like, it's a floor model. It's scuffed. And it's like, <laughs> all of this is scuffed. The chair is scuffed. The table is scuffed. It's all scuffed. And she's like, yeah, look. And it looks like someone had just like gone over it, you know, like taken a scalpel or kicked it or something. And it's like, can't sell it. It's scuffed. Just full on just entire drawing room setup just in the back of her boyfriend's van and then gone and then she like quit two weeks later <laughs> brilliant. anyway that lady's my hero <laughs> yeah, she didn't give a fuck because she knew she was on her way out so she didn't care you mm -hmm. said that like that's where you worked when you were like young an artist and didn't have money but the where i worked when i was young and an artist and didn't have money was i was a janitor mm-hmm that's it. That's the story. I was oh, a janitor. Oh, you don't have any fun stories? I mean, they didn't like me, and they were trying to get me fired by saying I didn't do stuff, but that's about it. It, it was just um, a scrubbing toilets job. You scrubbed the toilets, and that was. then you went home. No excitement? No, it was boring. I was cleaning a rec center after hours. It was spooky, because they turned off all the lights. Oh, God. And they had me oh. clean, like, 10 foot tall windows so you were like nearly but not quite the protagonist of five nights at freddy's no not at all midnight rec center cleanup rec center a recreation rec center. center i know what a rec center is how is that like five nights at freddy's <laughs> yeah five nights at freddy's is like a chuck e cheese that's different from a rec center i am trying to um, make your life interesting for you my life is interesting <laughs> I worked at a Red um, Lobster for six years. I have 10,000 restaurant stories. And then I worked at a, 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 a Mexican restaurant for two years. And I have a thousand more restaurant stories. I but also used to shoplift at Hobby Lobby for fun. That's right. You did. Uh, Can we have a restaurant story? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Which one? Um, the worst one you've got. The worst one? The worst yes. one. Okay. Worst. So I had developed a shellfish allergy from working there and we the the town about an hour north of our town needed replacement servers because they forgot almost all their staff was going to graduation so they had uh, me and another girl I worked with drive up there to sub for them now considering that I am allergic to shellfish I can't even touch it without puffing up mm -hmm. uh I became incredibly aware of how unclean this restaurant was because you know the, the tray jacks where you set the trays down on? They're like the stands mm -hmm. you put the trays on? Yeah. 
when I would get how I would put them on my shoulders, you'd slide your hand under it, slide it down and up your arm to be on your shoulder. Well, the first time I did that, it left a trail of red welts oh. all the way up my arm, which meant they were not cleaning them. Yeah. So that was gross. So uh, I then I would touch more things in the restaurant, you know, handles, books, menus, and my hands were swelling. And I was like, that's not good. Then I went to the back and all these teenagers were making the, everyone's salads and they were using their bare hands. Oh, dear. So I was like, where are the tongs? And they were like, oh, we don't have any. And then I started putting on gloves and they were like, oh, huh, that, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, oh. yes, I fucking do. Ew. And that was the only time I have drunk and drive. <laughs> what Red Lobster was this, Amanda? So everyone can stay away from it forever. I mean, this was years ago. This was back when it was under Darden Management, and it is no longer under Darden Management, but it was in Pearland, um, Texas. Oh, okay. Uh, Why? Yeah, will, that's will, my probably my worst story. I will forego the easy dunk on Texas. They've suffered enough. No, they haven't. <laughs> No, I have friends in Texas and I feel for them. I escaped. I know you did. I wish they could. But yeah, uh, God, there's others. Like, um, I'm, I'm all well, either. I mean, they're all kind of horrible. Like, horrible in a bring the, the mood down kind of way. Like, the incredibly uh -oh. racist couple I was forced to wait on for a year. Oh, boy. And then yeah, got that me is in trouble because I stopped though. smiling at them. They called corporate on me because I, like, <laughs> frowned at them. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so depressing. Yeah. Texas. I, there, there's lots. Uh, I mean, I also got proposed to by two old men in cowboy hats on different occasions. Hmm. I don't know why. Because you're beautiful. No, it definitely wasn't customers? that. At the Red Lobster? Yeah, um, I was also, uh, the Red Lobster had uh, a bar. It was like a kind a bar. And I was also, I, uh, for two of my years at Red Lobster, I was the bartender. And it's like a family restaurant bar. We just made like fruity mixed drinks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And blended stuff. And yeah, just old men would sit at the bar all day and they would propose to me. It was weird. Propose to you or proposition you? Propose. They would literally ask you, Amanda. Lafayette, they would ask me if I was married, oh. and I would say no because at the time I wasn't. And then, then they would say, "Oh, would you marry me?" Oh, they were just being adorable old men. It wasn't cute. <laughs> it was the I mean, there was no getting down on one knee. No, 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 yeah. no. There was none of that. They were not performing for a table full of friends. No, they were just, <laughs> oh, okay. they were trying to be cute, but I didn't find it cute. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Old men flirt in a certain kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they know I was also, I wasn't a very, I was a good bartender technically, but I was a bad bartender because I was kind of like, I don't like goofing off with people. I like to do my oh. job. Oh, okay. And people always want to goof with the bartender, and I would just be like, no, thank you. <laughs> Please order your drink. I have to admit, um, I have a friend, speaking of friends in Texas, I have a friend, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about here, Amanda, but they are a huge foodie. They are a connoisseur of unique culinary experiences. And they know I am like that, too. So when I went down to Austin for a convention, they were all like, oh, I know the exact place. Uh, that I'm going to take everybody and they took us to a cool weird little experimental restaurant and every time we had a course come out that we all shared they would take a photo of the food but they would also take a photo of themselves flipping you off yeah rude while they to the food. the food yeah That's and our tradition rude to the food yeah rude to the food and uh, the waiter began noticing this is what happening. And he was like, oh, I want to do it too. So when they were <laughs> taking a photo, the waiter would just pop his hand in. And so there'd be like one more hand than everyone expected flipping you off for <laughs> looking at their photos of food. And I, I thought that was good. And that person got extra tip. <laughs> yeah, okay. I actually have to post some photos from Cake Weekend because me and Blue and Evan Dom... Uh, went out to eat and I was doing rude to the food and Blue was like, oh, I want to. And then I took another picture and then I was like, wait, what about me? So like there's a sequential of, of hands appearing out of nowhere. Where did you all go? Some Brahmin place that wasn't very good. Oh, it was literally across we... the street. 
The next time you're in town, and John, if you ever end up in town too for a convention, I don't know how much convention stuff you do, but I do. Ever... I want it. I was. I got into cake this year, but then oh. I had a conflict and I couldn't go, and I was oh. bummed. It looked so much fun. I was like seeing all the photos on Instagram. And stuff. Yeah, cake is a trip, and if you ever, if if it ever occurs to you, it's like, oh, I must, I must go to Toronto at some point. Tea calf is also a trip. But... I did once. Oh, it was, it was expensive. <laughs> yeah, it, was. Yes. it was. Yeah, it was. but uh, one of my got to try out places in Chicago that I, I am slowly but surely getting together plans to take everybody to in a couple of weeks for another for a library conference it's called happy lamb and it's a hot pot place and i'm trying uh, to make sure everyone can go i just every time i'm in chicago i just want to stuff my face with dim sum yeah dim sum is also great there are a lot of good dim sum places around yeah here. I am actually kind of jealous, though, of New Yorkers for... Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to live in New oh, York. Spike, it literally smells like hot garbage. He- very... Oh. That would have mm-hmm. been quite a trip for cake. Oh? Well, oh, are you looking at a map right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, it's in Chinatown, so... Oh, they have yeah. one in the north, though. Maybe that oh. would have worked. Oh, I didn't know that. Apparently there's three. Oh, cool. Wait, okay, so... Did Iron Circus table at cake? Yes. 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 Oh. Yes, Amanda's Iron Circus is in Chicago. Table. Yeah, so. it was in our backyard. I, we just loaded the books into my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of those. Do comics conventions that much, right? Yeah, we took a huge amount of time off, like a lot of people, due to the pandemic. Ah. And when conventions came back, we were at a TCAF this year, and mm. we are also at Cake. And then at the end of this month, we're going to be at ALA, which is American Library Conference. We also did Emerald City Comic Con and C2E2. Yes, we also did those. And it's, I mean, it's fine. Like, not doing Chicago conventions feels like just leaving money on the table. So I feel obligated to do them. Mm-hmm. But we have kind of gotten to the point, and I've talked about this before. We've gotten to the point where we are trying to be a little more shrewd and sensible in our approach to conventions and part of that is we are doing conferences as opposed to conventions these days and conferences are about outlay whereas conventions are about making money and the ala the american library conference the thing we've got coming up is going to be expensive but the whole idea of it is we pay a bunch of money to fly people in and have them do convention stuff do signings do panels all that stuff and then like five months down the line every librarian who met our authors orders the book for their library and we make fifteen thousand dollars like that's the idea you gotta press the flesh you know (laughs) gross it's true (laughs) i know it just sounds gross yeah that's uh John, are there any Vigi games that you are partial to? Oh, random. Vigi games. Uh, no. Not really. No? Okay. <laughs> there, yeah. are, there are only so many hours in the day. Yeah, Tell me about fair. it. God. I wish. Yeah. Part, part of getting a new computer for me was because my RimWorld was starting to run slow. Uh, mm. need, need my Rim Rims. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see... What you gotta play, Kel, instead Stop. is Sailwind. You Stop. have to play the game where you uh, pretend that you're a That is not available on Max. Well, um, that's because Macs are inherently inferior machines. No, they're. Yeah. I like my Mac. Um, Mac suck. Sorry. It's intentional that I don't have access to more games. Because otherwise, I wouldn't get anything done. Like I saw Super mm-hmm. Eyepatch Wolves video about this video game called fear and hunger Mm -hmm. and was like that looks like suffering i want to play it um and then found out it does not work on max so i was like well that just saved me like 50 hours so hey john um, since you're normal what do normal people do for fun these days if they don't play video games oh i am not normal at all i go to my day (laughs) job and then i draw comics (laughs) Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Spike, I, I'm very normal. How dare you? Oh, please, Amanda. Please. <laughs> Nothing says normal like puppetry. Yeah. <laughs> 
I make my little puppets and I put on plays for children at the church. <laughs> are they plays like Veggie Tales level or are they subversive? No, Veggie Tales is like too highbrow. Oh, okay, sorry. So you go you go on after like the clowns for Christ, right? Maybe. <laughs> See you you paused because you are wearing a clown outfit right now in your little avatar. Listen, I was waiting. Shh. Quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Quiet your entire face. <laughs> All of it. Yes. John, it's nice to hear you have no life because I also have no life. You didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> I mean, it's just like what happens. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. 35 or 30. Yeah. You're kind of a cryptid, huh? Is that a Dungeons and Dragons it's thing? Like, no. It's like, it's what um, Bigfoot, are like, it's Bigfoot is. They're like urban legend monsters. So, like, no yeah, Bigfoot, Mothman, uh, Loch Ness Monster. Photo you Loch on Ness the Monster. Internet, yeah. Running away. I, I'm like a just cloistered in like a small dark room. Yeah, yeah. Same. Same. Like literally every day of my life. Same. Can't recommend it. Same. Like I sometimes when um I go to cons with Kel, I would refer to Kel as a cryptid because Kel is uh always present but never appears in photos. I hate my photo getting yes. taken. Um yeah. I when people are like, Oh, can I get your picture? I'm like, I really don't want you to. <laughs> um Do you know there's a scientific reason for that? Personal um, preference? No, no. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hate getting their photos taken because on a daily basis, what you see is a mirror image of yourself. So uh, you, it's think also... you, you think you know what your face looks like, but you don't. You so when you see a photo of yourself, uh, it spike, looks wrong. Spike, but I like having there's my photo also, taken. Uh, there's a, a gender component to it that I oh. realized. Oh, um, okay. So... All right, yeah, that is definitely a factor that is not one I considered, but it's maybe it's one of those things where it's like the dots connected as I got older. Um, oh, that's why I hate having my photo taken. Uh, mm. There's also why people a lot. That's the, also the same reason a lot of people don't like the sound of their own voice because you're hearing it through bone conduction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with the sound of my own voice. It yeah. is just uh, I don't like pictures of me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, what, what's the gender thing? Or like? Oh, because I'm non-binary and it's just I don't like femme things about me. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that that's it. That's that's cool. Yeah. I too hate getting my photo taken. Yeah, yeah. Possibly because of the mirror thing. Because of the scientific reasons. Yeah, That's, so the yeah. scientific reasons. Science. Yeah. And uh I uh I am yeah. kind of that person who I'm everything every old person has ever warned you about, everyone, because I have that whole deal where I thought I looked like shit when I was like 23, 24, 25, and now I'm 44. And I look at photos of myself in my 20s and I'm like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> I had no idea. Like, I spent several years in my 20s bodybuilding and I had, like, muscle mass. Like, I I looked like a bodybuilder. Oh, I should notice I looked like a, a natty bodybuilder. I believe that's the term the kids use these days. Like, I, I wasn't you on. you weren't on steroids. Yeah. 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 Uh, I wasn't on steroids. I looked like a woman who were lifted fit. a ton of weights. I looked very fit. And I thought I looked like shit at the time. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, th I only... thought I looked like shit in all my old photos, but that's just because of dysmorphia. Yeah, and I, I have one photo of myself as a bodybuilder because oh. it was the only one I'd allowed to be taken because I thought I looked so bad. And now I just, <laughs> I'm filled with regrets. So if anyone here is like in the peak of their firm skinned bouncy buttock to youth go get some boudoir photos taken no matter how shitty you think you look just go get some awesome sexy pictures of yourself taken just pay for it get it done because that one day you're gonna be like me you're gonna be 44 and you'd be like oh fuck i was so cute uh, or you'll be like I'm me and just be like it is my god-given right to be ugly <laughs> um, it's not my job I'm to be cute or attractive no one's gonna pay me to do it so why would i I uh I'm gonna get swole. Um, yeah, get swole, get swole. That's Operation 
kettle gets swole. That's what I'm working on this year. Uh, Good job. Good for you. I'm just going to, I'm going to be real. I'm going to try and get less fat. I don't want to die. I'm in my 40s. <laughs> uh, I did make the conscious decision starting like today. I want to start taking care of my heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm taking vitamin E. I'm, I'm actually doing a thing right now where I eat once a day and uh, I have been swayed by the scientific evidence that says that's pretty good for you. So nah, I'm doing... I will never fucking do that. Like it's one no. day, no. several times a day. Like I eat once <laughs> throughout the day, or just <laughs> that's yeah. no. That's I have one big meal around like ten or eleven, and then it's all water or tea. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that because if I I tried that and it just made me really pissy, ah. and I can't really afford to be pissy. I have too much work. The to do. the guy uh the guy is helping me at the gym is like you're not eating enough um and yeah, probably protein specifically huh? yeah protein yeah. uh oh that's so now now I have protein shakes um because <laughs> I'm too lazy to cook anything um yeah yeah I I I I. It's very hard to explain to people how lazy I am in regards to the kitchen <laughs> because they're like, well, why don't you just boil some eggs? And I'm like, that still requires filling the pan with water. Don't you have a fridge full of soil? Too? how long the eggs are in the water. Don't you have a whole fridge of soylent too? Uh, not anymore because they changed the sweetener in it, and that was upsetting my stomach. Um, oh, oh. Soylent? I did soylent for a, for a while. Yeah, it was I. I was <laughs> kind of like I feel like it was like second or third wave. It was still like kind of early, and I had this idea where like I was just like it's it was like still a powder, you know. It wasn't like when they had the like drinks you could buy at the supermarket. But it was like, oh, I can just like stock up on this stuff, and like when civilization collapses, <laughs> like I can just wow. Powder itself goes bad after like a month. Uh, oh no! Someone in the chat is asking, "What is Soylent?" And Soylent is a meal replacement shake um, that was made by Tech Bros and not nutritionists, so it is yeah. not that good for you. Um, and and weirdly nate like they named it knowing about soylent green yeah. yeah um so uh for a while i had a subscription to the pre-made ones because again the fact that it is a powder and you need to add water and like mix it properly that was too much effort um so mm -hmm. the pre-made ones that i could just open up um i had those for a while particularly the chai latte ones um but they, like I said, they just switched what sweetener they're using, and um, that was upsetting my stomach. Um, yeah. And um, so uh, now I'm drinking like Premier Protein, uh, which tastes pretty good and don't upset my tummy. Um, <laughs> what I'm just yeah. trying to do is like meal prep, like I. Mm -hmm. the beginning of my week i'll basically make three different dinners or me big meals and i'll just box them up so that's like uh like i'll make a lasagna and then divide that up and that'll be like my lunch for a week and then mm -hmm. i'll make like uh some like corn enchiladas or something and then that'll be my dinner for a week so yeah. like i will make a family size dinner on monday and then divide it up for the rest of the week. And that kind of makes it's that's how I've been trying to eat healthier, but also eat lazier, because that means throughout yeah. the week all I gotta do is toss something in the microwave. Yeah. The crazy yeah, the crazy thing about meal prep when I hear people like, oh, I could I couldn't do that, it looks like a ton of work. It's like actually it's less work because you're cooking once every four or five days as opposed to every day. That's still more cooking yeah. than I want to do. That's fair. Um Yeah. I've also started uh, um, looking out for deals like uh, the different grocery stores have a bunch of pre-made meals, like they're pre-made family meals. And there have been a few days I just bought that and I divided that up for a week. Yeah, especially when it's on clearance. Because it'll be entire meals like it has the meat, it has the veggies and, you know, all whatever. Whereas, 
whereas I really enjoy cooking. So like my one meal every day is is something lovingly handcrafted and fresh by myself. And I want to share with you a thing I'm going to try, hopefully tomorrow or the day after. So you can all be disgusted with me oh. and stop speaking to me. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to let you know that my laziness means that I cannot have junk food in my house because otherwise I will have that for dinner instead of making dinner. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. what if junk instead food of and candy are literally not allowed? In my yeah. Home. What if mm. instead of making food, I just ate this entire family size bag of potato chips? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Been there. But the thing I plan on making is because they were cheap. The last time we went shopping, we got a bunch of bone in skin on chicken thighs, which I already get because I like making my own broth because like I cooking is recreational to me. So I like to make my own broth and, uh, the skin on the chicken thighs. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I have some frozen shrimp in the fridge. And I am going to make shrimp dumplings. But instead of using flour wonton wrappers, I am literally going to wrap them in chicken skin and deep fry them that way. And I'm going to see how that turns out. Because I love fried chicken skin. And I love shrimp dumplings. So, you know what? Maybe fried chicken skin shrimp dumplings are going to be Spike? the new thing. <laughs> I think yeah. you have drastically underestimated all the horrible things you've said and done and then like yeah. made me privy to because I was expecting the worst like oh is this the thing and it's just like you're just cooking food in food I'm cooking I'm making fried chicken skin dumplings because they sound really right, good right but like that's not horrible or yeah, friendship that's ending not like, our yeah, friendship that's has not... survived far worse yeah that's yeah, not true. like I'm trying seagull meat for. I would eat a seagull in a second, and you know that. Oh, but I ate a, I ate a horse when I was in Canada, and somebody. Well, on no, got horses really are me. tasty. They um, are. They're really. Good. Whereas seagulls taste like garbage because they eat garbage. How do you um, know? What was the last time you ate a seagull? There was a guy, like a Cooking Network guy, who he ate all the trash animals and ranked oh. them. Um, I would like to and, try that. And basically, uh, his summary was animals that eat trash taste like trash. Um, Kristen in the chat says KFC double down dumplings. Yeah. What were you saying, John? Uh, oh, no. So, like, his ranking was just they were all at the bottom. They were all like. <laughs> no, he did, like, give them an order, but it was basically like the more an animal ate trash, the more it tasted like trash. Yeah. Does anyone here remember? In the time before, we would have called it a meme. There was a thing going around about squirrel melts. Just me? Okay. Yeah. There, was a, there was a woman who had a YouTube channel. Don't remember her name, but I bet if you Googled squirrel okay, YouTube melts. YouTube does not predate the term memes. I, but this video is so old. Like, I don't think anyone but me remembers it. It was this woman who had, like, a country cooking channel. And she had two strapping country boys and... One of them had a pellet gun and he went out and shot like five squirrels <laughs> and she took them from him and skinned them and boned them and cooked up the meat and then made them like tuna melts, but with squirrel meat and just was so casual about it. It was fascinating to watch. And she just ended the video holding up the platter of shredded squirrel on sourdough covered with cheese. And she just smiled and she said, squirrel melts, you must <laughs> try them. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been like, yes, squirrel melts. One day I must try a squirrel melt. I just don't get so how that's weird. It. Squirrel melts, you must try them, is a whole new sentence at the time. Ah, I see. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, Amanda. Are you well versed in squirrel melts? No, it's just people eat lots of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I found the article, and basically, um, Seagulls taste like trash, particularly they taste, taste like fish that have been left in the trash, um, since they eat both trash and fish a lot. Uh, yeah. And I think a seagull would eat your baby if it could. If it oh, could. God, absolutely. Yeah. If its mouth oh, could fit. I remember. OK, I speaking of things that are going to ruin our friendship. OK, Amanda. well, I can mute you. <laughs> so watch yourself. This isn't about seagulls, I promise. Uh, so. I found a photo. If it's set. too gory, remember. It's, it's not gory. I will simply leave it at like two sentences. Like, 
over here there was like a video that was it was it was eventually shown to be faked it was a video of like an eagle or hawk or something trying to steal someone's baby we all remember that like faked video right no oh no well that was a thing a while ago somebody put together a video of like an eagle swooping down and like trying to take a baby from its mother's arms and that was proven to be fake but what isn't fake is a uh, there are entire papers written in uh, South African clinics about attempting to recover babies and toddlers and children who are like okay. seven and under from baboon attacks. And uh, baboons are incredibly brutal. Yeah, okay. Well, you're going to know. I will leave it there. My finger's been hovering over the mute. If you've ever seen a baboon yawn, you'll know what I mean. You mm -hmm. continue. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm just saying you're, you're, you're giving like, my imagination a, like a good old push. Yeah, and if you want to Google South African baboon attack on child, I can't stop you, everyone. <laughs> see, see, that's what I'm talking about. You're talking, oh, well, I'm going to test our friendship with this... <laughs> Weird dumpling. <laughs> and not the fact that Amanda had to make very specific, spike specific chat room rules for the last 10 years. I'm just sharing. I'm yeah. sh I share good things. I yeah. share nice things. I've no. expanded horizons everywhere I go. I just don't click anything you like. <laughs> so how, how were the shrimp chicken dumplings? Like, oh, I haven't made them yet, but I plan on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm super looking forward to it. Um, yeah, it sounds I'm, good, doesn't it? It sounds real good. I have a thing to share with y'all that mm -hmm. uh, has been shared If with I me. could eat shrimp, I would absolutely want to try them, Spike. I wish I had the power to fight the climate emergency. <laughs> it is done. Again? Redacted. Yep. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> God. I Kill have... the corporations. Kill yeah, the I have... I have wished for a death note. Like, I am that kind of weeb. I have actively wished for a death note countless times. Um, I could Spike, you said that a couple of shows ago cough. that you want to watch Death Note and the live action Death Note because you've not actually seen Death mm -hmm. Note. I have seen a couple um, of episodes of anime Death Note. I have not seen much. Okay, so when you eventually descend into Death Note, um, I'm also going to recommend that you watch the Death Note musical, which, in my uh, personal opinion, is the best execution of Death Note. Um, I would say that. You have a musical bias. Oh, it's fucking great. Um, there's a super homoerotic duet between Elle and Light. Um, Good, they know exactly what be. they were doing. Yeah. I don't suppose you watch anime, do you, John? Uh, I do. A, a good friend of mine who is a smart person is has been like pushing me on Death Note for a while. Ooh. And I look at it and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. But <laughs> um, I, I like the manga better, but the anime is fine. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the problems with Death Note aren't the end, um, but uh it's mostly good do not bite my microphone you little diablo this sounds like kitten issues uh and, and part of why the musical is the best version is because they changed the end um I don't really the think. author in realizing that they fucked up the ending fixed it for the musical uh okay i'm caught up on gundam uh g witch from mercury it's definitely a gundam show Kristen Cheney is asking me how I'm going to seal my chicken skin dumplings. I have some cooking twine. And the plan right now is to wrap up the, the shrimp mixture in the dumplings to, to wind them shut like with like a Christmas package, like tie them with some chicks with some twine. And then I'm going to leave them in the fridge to dehydrate for like maybe six or seven hours. And then I'm going to boil them. To blanch the skin and tighten it up and then i'm going to deep fry them so much work it's a um, lot of work it's going to be for something i can't get anywhere you know no, well, that's so, fair i just my problem with stuff like that is all i can think of this will be poop <laughs> uh also, also spike 
yes. when you watch Death Note, I do want to talk to you about it. Um, really? I have Death Note opinions. Um, I, see, the thing is, I'm one of these freaks, though. It's like everybody has their little terrible secret. And among the, the weebery, my, my secret is like... Cowboy Bebop just doesn't do a thing for me, and every oh, yeah, time I say that, that before. yeah, people look yeah. at me like I, I'm like a medieval leper ringing a bell coming towards their home every time I say I, that in public. I don't think I Kale's have expecting yet... you to like it. I think Kale's just expecting to have conversation about it. Yeah, right? like uh, also, I have yet to meet someone that likes the ending of Death Note, okay. um, because uh, a lot of what makes Death Note good. Um, and if you enjoy Death Note, you enjoy the dynamic between Light and L, like mm -hmm. they're spy versus spy, cat and mouse, like trying to outsmart each other. They're chip eating. Um, sure. yeah. And, um, spoiler, L dies. Wow. Thanks um, for that, Kel. Um, I genuinely That's... think Spike wouldn't have wanted he... that spoiler. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, Kel. Yeah, well, well the so problem much. with. The problem with the end is that it just then keeps going for 15 more episodes. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, that well, I think actually would have been I'm better. Sorry, I'm still going to watch it. I'm still going to watch it. I, the way I see things, you're not really allowed to complain about spoilers a year after something has been Fair. released. So I don't personally care about yeah. spoilers. I just know you do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. So it just keeps going for like. 15 maybe even 20 episodes after that because he gets a new arch nemesis and is this that girl no the no girl is no an obsessive girlfriend okay yeah he sucks uh, okay. um she's crazy um uh, who this is i'm assuming this is light's girlfriend no uh well yeah i guess kind of um uh, okay and, you can and stop there you can stop yeah, there yeah you can stop there and, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so like there, there's replacement L's that are not as good as L, and uh, mm -hmm. it, so it's kind of like a letdown because oh, it's not L. Yeah, John, what are your feelings on uh, Studio Ghibli stuff? Uh, I like it. I we just watched Princess Mononoke. Oh, that's my fave. Okay like a week ago um and watched it in a while it wasn't i don't know it's it's like it's so good but i was also like this isn't as good as i remembered <laughs> like it, uh, look, it looks so good but i don't know it spike saying that she doesn't like cowboy bebop getting her weird looks for me it's i don't really like ghibli movies is the thing that gets me weird looks have mm. you ever watched uh the wind also rises no yeah, it's a Ghibli movie, and it's one I actually skipped for years because I thought it wouldn't be my vibe because I will not get into it because, God, there will be a lot to get into. But there is a lot of crossover between old school foundational anime guys and military history guys. <laughs> and Hayao Miyazaki is one of those guys. My least favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, military history people can be incredibly gross and tedious, but... Uh, for a lot of Japan, a lot of that obsession is specifically in the machinery, which is why so much of uh, Miyazaki's stuff features airplanes. Mm. And The Wind Also Rises is not biographical. It's not accurate. But it is about a famous Japanese engineer who helped Japan basically get their first kind of homegrown fighter plane designed and off the ground. And I was like, cool, I don't care about that. I will not watch this. But then years later, I had an opportunity to, to see it for free. And I was like, okay, well, you know, whatever, see a Ghibli movie. And I really enjoy it because it's, it's clearly about Japan in the buildup to World War II. And watching Japan negotiate that in media they know is going to be international is always kind of entertaining. <laughs> and uh, they they had a whole kind of subplot that was explicitly about this guy has no feelings about politics. He is simply like raging geek for aeronautical engineering. He wants to make the perfect airplane, not for the sake of Japan, but for its own sake. Like they had to make sure that was just absolutely being hammered into you the whole time. 
And, you know, okay, sure, this seems to be a a logical and historically accurate thing because this dude ended up writing, like, all these dissertations about how evil it was to use airplanes to kill people. And he had, like, all these bits in the movie where he was thinking, fantasizing, envisioning kind of all the people who had died because of the airplanes he designed. And it was it was a very interesting movie. And... There is a subplot that is apparently made up out of whole cloth where he's in love with someone with tuberculosis back when that meant game over. And that, that was an interesting subplot. But yeah, I, I know when people talk about sort of like the feel of a Ghibli movie, they, that's what turns them off. I would recommend The Wind Also Rises to them because See, it's interesting. I'm the one who uh, loves the feel of them. Mm hmm. And I actually, you made me remember, um, I lucked into the collected works of Hayao Miyazaki. It is a fat ass DVD collection of like all of them. And mm -hmm. like, I really want to go through and watch the ones I haven't seen before. Like, it's basically formatted like it's a book and the pages mm -hmm. hold the, D the DVDs. It's so pretty. Uh -huh. I lucked into mm -hmm. it for $8. Uh, Ooh. I... I don't like Miyazaki Miyazaki movies just because um, they just really fall flat for me, um, and really? I kind of um, am especially disappointed in Howl's Moving Castle um, because I really like the book and the yeah. movie is yet another Miyazaki movie telling me war is bad rather than. <laughs> I actually have an old any Japanese man killed. I mean, but the thing is, is like, <laughs> What's that why did you even adapt this book then if you just wanted to tell me war is bad again? I will um, say, uh, I feel, I do like the movie, but I read the book first and I love the book. Ooh. It's a very good book. So, um, I was yeah. actually uh, dating someone who we had this thing, uh, or was this before? I don't know. Long story short, we had this thing where we would like read chapters to each other to be cute. And it was nice to read to each other. But we got to that book. And when she left, I read it all by myself. You cheated. I cheated because I was that into it. I was like, oh, this is so fucking good. It's so fucking good. Mm -hmm. And then I finally got around to seeing the movie. And it's f I like it. I like the movie. But it is not the book. It is a different creature. They have different yeah, tones. It's, it's a different creature. It's just one is one that I've... Yeah, you told me that with your last five movies. Um, or is it like a comic book? Because huh? most of them are like... Sorry, I think my internet sucks. Um, no, you're good. Go for like, it. Like most of them are based on... like graphic novels or just original scripts right a lot like, of them yeah. are based off uh books yeah like was spirited away a book that was not um i know that uh howl's moving castle was a book uh kiki's delivery service is based off a book it has a different name than the original if i remember right mm -hmm. um or like my neighbor totoro is that, that was an original i don't believe it was based on anything yeah, there's a few and others I, that I, are based on books, and I'm just it's going out my ears. I think Kokoro is an original uh, too. I also think a lot of his characters are pretty flat. Um, hmm. I mean, that is that is not entirely unfair, but if yeah. I can like go full otaku on you all and just blast no. you all with what I'm about to say, I, I do apologize for all of this in advance. So, I have been teaching myself Japanese. And yeah, I'm one of those. Yeah, and, when Marnie was there, that's true. That was also a yeah. book. Yeah, and the borrowers, uh, I forgot. Yeah, I fucking oh my god, that's my fuck. The Secret World um, of Arietti was based on the borrowers. I love the Secret World of Arietti. That's fuck. not in my collection. My collection predates it. <laughs> but one of the things that I am now developing a more a more profound appreciation of is subtitles are fucking lies. They're yeah, all yeah. lies. And I think that significantly hampers a lot of what is attempting to be communicated in a lot of especially Japanese film because there are, and this isn't me being like hoity-toity, you never understand, mom. This is me just being literal. And anyone who's even semi-fluent in Japanese would agree. There are certain elements in the language that there is just no 
English equivalent. Yeah, there. Uh, I, my favorite thing is whenever the subs versus dubs argument comes up, anyone who speaks any Japanese, their answer to that is, well, neither is actually more authentic than the yeah. other. Yeah. Um, if you really want authenticity, learn Japanese and watch it without the subtitles. Yeah, and you get the uh, vibe. You you know, you don't speak the lingo, but you catch the drift when you know what is actually being said as opposed to what... And I understand what the subtitles are trying to do. They're oh, trying to get the story across in a way that makes sense. Because subtitling, a lot of that is an art. And, you mm -hmm. know, hey, since there are only 12 people watching, I can say this. Woo, yeah, it's like right now, one of the things that we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to add uh, Asian continent subtitles to Lackadaisy. And to do the Japanese ones, it's going to require a lot, like with a capital A, capital L, because there's there's going to be be like meetings between Tracy and the translators because it's that involved they get and, a whole pronoun thing yeah they got pronoun stuff to go through and you know oh no we Excuse decided to open me, it man. with poetry so that's going to be a whole thing too and it's it's just so involved and i am not i am not bagging on like people who write the subtitles and translators it's hard it's hard but I can see why it's so easy to kind of miss threads of plot if someone is a hardcore subs only anime watcher. Well, I think with and, subs, you still um, to hear the original voice actors. You can at least hear them. But mm -hmm. with dubs, like, again, I don't think subs are superior because they're both translating and transliterating and reinterpreting it so that it makes sense to you. It's just two different methods of doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I actually don't also, mind. Oh, what, John? Spike, I, I, I uh, with subtitles, like you're at least like hearing the original. Like even yeah. if you understand it, like you're still hearing like the rhythm and the inflection. Yeah. And you're like, this is what it they're saying, and then here's the some sort of translation of it. But with you know, you know with dubs, that all of that is obliterated, and like you're just hearing this, you know. Yeah, but, have, but even having said that, I think there have been dubs. There have been experiences where I watched like a sub and then a dub, and it was when I watched the dub that I actually got to take in more of the animation because I do miss a lot of visuals sometimes when I'm watching subs. Like, oh yeah, because I'm paying attention to what people are saying. So it, the words so hard, I will miss visual things. So it's like you win some, you lose some. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm dubs only. I get it. I absolutely get it. But. It's one of those deals where e whether you are dub or sub, um, I'm both. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll watch dubs with captions. Yeah, but uh, one of the things that I, that's like a good example, is there are various ways to say I in Japan. A lot of people know that, and there are wildly offensive ways to say I. There are wildly offensive ways to say you, and there are also variants of that that are like offensive but people don't really take offense because it's so cartoonishly over the top this way you say i and you that they they know you're probably joking and if you're not joking you're not to be taken seriously and in english we have i <laughs> and sometimes someone puts in the work to try and figure out a way to communicate the vibe and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But One of my you know. favorite stories is uh, from Toby Fox. And it's just about how, like, they did just have to, like, ch completely change what some characters were saying in the Japanese dub of Undertale. Mm -hmm. And and it's because, like, it just did, the joke didn't translate it. So they just yeah. had to make a brand new joke um, just to get the spirit across, not necessarily the words. And it resulted in the Japanese fandom having its own unique memes yeah which is just um, incredibly charming yeah what i think is really funny is the japanese fan community for king of the hill i am, yeah. unaware, of, I am unaware of the japanese fan community for king of the hill they're oh my God. they're they're just like all of uh ever the most weebs going well the subs are more authentic and you're just like <laughs> not like so that but they're Japanese people talking about King of the Hill. If you're not watching it subtitled, you're missing like <laughs> the subtleties of the Joker. <laughs> Amazing. I saw a screenshot of a 
of a, like a Chan board, a real one, like, you know, with Japanese yeah. users. And I like it had translations on it. And I just fucking laughed so hard because on that board, it was like one guy just berating another guy going, ah, you think you like cartoons. I bet you only watch like The Simpsons and South Park. I bet I'm right, aren't I? You only watch South Park. And the other guy's like, so what if I do? I like South Park. And he was like, that's what I thought. I knew it. You're a fake enjoyer of cartoons. You don't even know about the good ones. Yeah, just keep watching South Park. (laughs) Holy fuck. (laughs) It was incredibly funny. It was just so brutal. Because it's like, I have heard those fucking conversations at conventions. Where it's like, you didn't even watch Neon Genesis Evangelion. And you say you like anime. Upsh, upsh. (laughs) <laughs> is this what they sound like fuck yes yes it Neon is Neon the seven gullion is like the only thing i've watched <laughs> what did you think of it oh i love it really <laughs> so you saw the series and the movie and the new one and and that's the seven gullion i was like the <laughs> show gets me <laughs> I was young. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things where I've I've watched part of it, but then I wander away before it's done, and then someone's like, "Well, you know, he jerks off over someone." And like, "Oh, really?" And then I went back and watched that. That's the movie. You gotta. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's like the, the yeah the end where um they replace the last two episodes with a movie. Um. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I, not replace I think I've, it. It's not necessarily replaced. It's meant to like um, technically just be, um, like yes, it was. It is animating scenes that were meant to be made, but they couldn't because of budget. But also, like the last two episodes are meant to be symbolic of what is actually happening in the movie. Oh. I think actually they have a very different vibe. Um, uh oh. Uh, and. So I feel like they are very different endings. Um, to be and fair, I, feel I haven't like every... seen them in a long while, and my opinions have slowly changed with time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like okay. my understanding was the guy who made the show, like, made the ending of the show that was his own sort of, you know, very insular vision of the thing, and the studio and audiences were not happy with it. So then they had to go back and like tack these. Movies Oh. Yeah, because uh, in the first ending, Sinji is more yeah. active, and yeah. it has kind of a hopeful note. And then the end of Evangelion ends with him choking um, a girl, and then saying he's a terrible person as the world ends. I was drawn in by the interesting ideas that it had because I had someone, the first time I heard of it, it was someone explaining it to me at a convention. They're like, yeah, so there's these things and they're called angels and they come down and they have to fight them in these robots. But because they're fighting them in populated areas, they can't use like nuclear power or nuclear fission or anything. They have to be plugged in. And a, a lot of what the concern is, is like how much battery power the robots have if that plug gets severed and they can for they can only be piloted by people that were born after all this shit started for reasons no one fully understands and i was like oh well that sounds interesting i'll give it a shot and it just it can't hold on to me for more than like two episodes maybe i should continue giving it a chance uh i will say i was kind of forced to watch it by my at the time fiance Mm -hmm. um and he kept being like no 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 i swear to god i swear to god and I was like, okay, all right. And I'll keep watching it. Like, like, but it got to this one point when I was like, oh, fuck, yes. Oh. I remember just shouting like, at the TV like, oh, yeah. Because basically, Spike, like, the first few episodes feel kind of more standard mech anime-y because they need to set that up so when shit hits the fan, it hits you in the gut bigger. Mm-hmm. Um. So, like, I don't think the first few episodes are the best, but they are necessary so that way when they're like, oh, so you think you know what's going on now? Well, now we're going to punch you in the gut and then kick you in the balls repeatedly. (laughs) Maybe I will give it another chance. Uh, I have to admit, I have a contrarian streak, so I do have this impulse. 
shut up. I do have this impulse for if like a lot of people are telling me to do something, I immediately don't want to do I, it. It's very I productive also, and it's made my life very easy. I also think it definitely resonates more if you see it when you are a 13 year old boy. That is um, absolutely a thing. I have wondered sometimes when it comes to uh, Evangelion if like I missed my window, you know? Uh, well, it's at least artistically interesting. Um, oh yeah, I'll when the shit sure. hits the fan. Yeah. So like, even though I'm I'm not diehard, it's the best thing ever. It's like, oh, this these are interesting shots. Like, yeah. And remember that drawing I did of big text. Big text. During that one, never mind. I did a drawing of big text that was a parody of one of the one of the oh shit scenes. Oh okay. I, I that one went over my head. Then. I'll post it to Twitter later. Yes, that's. It was that stream where I kept um, interjecting the horror that is big text into the entire stream. I think what's for me that Evangelion is for a lot of people is uh, I saw Akira at a really young age. And I, I have come to accept, since I am older now, I have come to accept there is a whole lot wrong with that movie. I and the manga is much, much better. I kind of feel but, like I feel like your impression of Evangelion about like it being seen by people of a certain age at a certain time is kind of how I feel about the Matrix movies. Maybe. I really enjoyed the first Matrix movie. Does anybody enjoy the second or third one? I feel like um, I will link you to a YouTuber that made a video called "The Matrix Sequels Are Good." Actually, <laughs> um, their <laughs> argument rests on the case that the second and third movie are actually one movie um yeah. and it's just it got cut in half at a time before we got used to movies getting cut in half like that hmm. um speaking the, of movies that have been cut in half so how's everybody enjoying the spider-verse film it didn't get I cut in half it. it was planned to be two movies for a while yeah, but apparently they did not lead the marketing with that. So no, a lot of they did not. No, okay, yeah, no, yeah. you are correct. They did not. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'm planning to see it with a friend uh, soon. Cool. I haven't seen it yet, and finding out that it is part one of two kind of killed a lot of my interest to see it in theaters. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, but yeah, um, the Matrix sequels. Um, Look. I I was a Steven Universe fan. I have been conditioned to wait. <laughs> yeah. Um but uh the the Matrix sequels if you do watch them one right after the other, they are better than if you watch them individually. Mm -hmm. They're still really long. Um <laughs> I'm going to be real, the only bits I remember from anything to do with the Matrix is I watched and loved multiple segments of the Animatrix, and I really enjoyed yeah. the first episode of the Matrix, which I should note, imagine being able to say this, I should note, it was at that time in my life where I was like mall ratting a lot, and there was just not a lot to do where I was except go to the mall and see movies. <laughs> and I went in with no idea what that movie was. I had no mm -hmm. clue. I had not seen any advertising for it whatsoever. And I was not prepared for what I saw. And, and it, it really stuck with me. And just the ending to the first Matrix movie was like, it kind of still holds a spot in my heart as like the perfect ending. <laughs> oh, man, you you made me, you talk about mall rat and around. I was not a mall rat. I didn't have that kind of personal freedom as a child. But mm -hmm. um, what we did a lot was uh, my mom would take us, me and my brothers, a lot to dollar, the dollar cinemas. Mm -hmm. And Dollar Cinemas, you know, got the movies well after they left the main theater. So you could, you know, go real cheap and see like movies rather late. So uh -huh. we would do Dollar Cinemas a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of my core memories is one day my mom's car broke down right near the Dollar Cinema. And it was going to take a long time for them to come tow. Um, and... My mom thought, well, it's going to take a while to get here. This is Texas. Everyone is boiling. What if we pass the time by watching a movie? 
Mm-hmm. So she we went to the dollar th- dollar cinema, and uh, she just she just picked a movie. It didn't matter what because I think you can you did, I think she just grabbed the one that was showing now. It was Deep Blue Sea, which is a movie where people get ripped apart by sharks. Ooh. And me and my brothers were very little, and both of my brothers cried nonstop. <laughs> So the thing I remember most about Deep Blue Sea is Samuel L. Jackson does a very dramatic speech about how they're going to fight and kill the shark. And then it just jumps out of the yeah. water and kills him in it one does. bite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and- There's also a character who has a pet parrot that gets eaten by a shark. And he, yeah. gets and, and he survives again. Yes, and wants revenge for his parrot yes. the whole movie. Um, it's a very silly movie, but if you are a tiny child, it is like, oh, Oh my god no yeah uh, uh, my movie my experience for that was oh i like the thing that happened to me was uh i think it's an experience a lot of people uh have where they are sort of deposited at the mall by family members and i was there with a bunch of cousins who were all older than me and the cousins were instructed Pick something you can all go see yeah and that's go right see uh it. kristen ll cool j was the final girl of that movie <laughs> And go and pick something you can all go see and go see it. I'll be back in two hours. Bye. And <laughs> the the movie that was picked was the original RoboCop. And <laughs> for, yeah. <laughs> and I was extremely young. I think I was like seven or something. Oh, that's right. And, the story. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they, they took, we all went in to see RoboCop. And to this day, it took me literal decades to get the guts up to look for this on YouTube and watch it again. But there there was a scene with the Ed 209 and it's malfunctioning in the boardroom. And it ends up murdering some executive. And there's like this whole period they're trying to turn it off and it just like won't stop fucking shooting him. And Mm -hmm. that is burned into my brain forever. (laughs) That is the first time I had ever uh, seen anything like that. John, I have a question for you. Um, what medias inspired or influenced your comics? Yes, please tell. How dare you make this about comics? Um, <laughs> uh, gosh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, other comics. <laughs> <laughs> what do you read? Um, RoboCop, sadly, not in there. I, I only watched. <laughs> RoboCop for the first time a couple of years ago. Um, what influenced? I don't know. Um, Do you read any manga or? You know what I mean. Honestly, it was like a lot of like, like Saturday morning cartoons when I was a kid. It was a lot of like Nicktoons tunes and stuff. Yeah. Like, what goes modern life and like Ren and Stimpy and like Doug. Like if I'm like a yeah, like, I definitely like, feel the Rocco's Modern Life vibes. Yeah, like I like to intellectualize it and be like, well, you know, I read like a lot of like James Joyce and like. <laughs> so lie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cartoons um, like watching when I was like ten. Um, yeah. yeah, Rocco's is big in there. Calvin and Hobbes is in there. Oh yeah, um, I can see that for sure. Uh, I don't know. some other stuff. I don't know if that's a good answer. I don't remember. I recently Any answer is a good answer because it's a Yeah, truth. there are no wrong answers here. I recently learned why the Calvin Peeing decal is so prolific. Oh, yeah. I have a documentary in my watch laters that I was going to watch about that. And it's it's the, basically, the reason why they couldn't stop them is because the way you prevent copyright infringement is you have to prove that it's like costing you money and since bill watterson is so anti-merch like they could not successfully argue that it was taking merch sales away from calvin and Hobbes. Hmm. and now it's everywhere yeah there was like this famous moment in the 90s where they were like pushing him to merchandise and there was like this mm-hmm. moment like this and you know the, like syndication company was like pushing him to merchandise and i just heard from somebody like a, a, just a few days ago i don't know if this is true or not that like the actual like number that was on the table 
that they were like offering him for merchandise was like eight hundred million dollars. I'm like, I don't. Wow. I don't... And he said, no. "Yeah, that makes sense because like." If you think about how much merch for like Peanuts and Garfield yeah. sells and Calvin and Hobbes is like the other big thing that they could sell to kids. Uh, yeah. Well, what I do know is Carl Schultz at like the peak of his career in terms of like merchandise and stuff for Peanuts mm-hmm. was making as much money per year as Michael Jordan was in the like, Holy these so the real life yeah. version of that one comic like wait make make way a cartoonist is coming through yeah. mm-hmm. and i yeah. don't want to uh, i don't even want to like bring this up but frankly it's only 13 people watching so it feels fairly safe for the first time in my life bootlegging has become an issue for me oh yeah yeah um <laughs> Because of lack of days, yep. Yeah, it's already out there and it looks real bad. Yeah, I looked at Amazon <laughs> and there's um a bunch of lackadaisy plushes. And my favorite thing is two the two that I saw were stealing the designs shared previously, like, you know, and people sharing previews. But mm-hmm. one of the designs is using, um, I think the artist's name is like Naz FX or something like that. Yeah. And it's a they're using her image, and it's a very, very custom doll, like the kind that takes 800 hours to make. Yeah, and it's a custom, special order, very expensive commissioned plush. Yeah, and like, I just love the idea of like, yeah, you can get this for $18. And I love, mm-hmm. I like, no, I want to see what that person, if you order that, what you get in the mail. I want to see the monstrosity mm-hmm. that you get in the mail. They'll get nothing. If oh, they you get, get nothing in the mail. That's yeah. what they'll you they'll get. probably um, get nothing. But uh, at the same time, there are some that do send a product. Um, <laughs> to, to bring it back to Peanuts briefly. No. Um, have any of you, do you, any of you know what the last Peanuts strip is? No. No. Um, it is one that is super fucking depressing in me- if you have metatextual knowledge about Charles Schultz. Um, and how he was I know that he died like two days after the last strip ran or something, but Yeah, uh, because basically he was ill enough that he like couldn't draw straight lines and his vision was starting to go. Uh-huh. And the last peanut strip is it's raining so hard that the game base baseball game is getting canceled Mm -hmm. and peppermint patty is like come on everyone let's keep playing Mm -hmm. and peppermint patty's uh friend whose name i forget is like sir everyone else has gone home marcy marcy is like sir everyone else has gone home um and basically it's raining so hard that peppermint patty couldn't see that like the game has been called due to rain Mm -hmm. uh but wants to keep playing even though she physically can't like yeah i'm founding it i found it right now they're playing football and peppermint patty is yelling at charlie brown who is not there and just going hey we're having fun aren't we chuck it's still your ball fourth down what are you gonna do chuck you gonna run or pass and then marcy shows up with an umbrella and goes everyone's gone home sir you should go home too it's getting dark and then peppermint patty goes we had fun, didn't we, Marcy? And Marcy goes, yes, sir, we had fun. And uh, Peppermint Patty, the last panel is, nobody shook hands and said good game. Yeah. That is the last Peanuts panel. But yeah, wow. There is definitely a point where, um, where the lines in Peanuts yeah. get shaky. And yeah. I... I don't remember, like, before I actually went back and read the old strips, I thought that's just what it looked like. But it was quite a shock when I went and read, like, the Peanuts Treasury, like, the complete versions. And the early strips, the lines were very crisp and straight. And I was like, oh. 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 Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I do also like the first Charlie Brown strip. Um, Good old Charlie Brown. How I hate him. Yeah. 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 That's what it used to look really nice. And the thing that I think it for the reason I didn't like the reason I did not understand is because at this point, by the time I was like reading peanuts, 
they sort of incorporated the wobbly line into like the merchandising and mm-hmm. all the advertising. Cause I just thought that's how do drew it's like, no, no, he's palsied. Bummer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Bummer. Death comes for us all. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks. I think about Thank Shermie you. a lot. Do you remember Shermie? Charlie Brown's original best friend before four no. lines. I, I didn't really read Shermie. Peanuts. I never really have. So I'm, I'm gonna, this is kind of all going over my head. I got to Yeah, I, I never really did it. But in the early strips, like Charlie Brown wasn't even the star. There was this mm-hmm. other kid named Shermie who like didn't really have much of a personality and didn't have much to do. It was like very quickly eclipsed by the other characters. And he just kind of like gradually like faded away into oblivion without ever and like, then uh and then snoopy showed up and everything changed all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i am not finding a, a shermy for peanuts but i'm finding a shermy who is a character in king of fighters <laughs> who is wow ma'am you are falling out of that dress <laughs> Mind your own business, Spike. Uh, there, there is a YouTuber I like who, uh, in one of her videos, I was like, "Oh, she looks like she's about to fall out of her dress." Uh, this, I like. I don't know how I feel about this. D- does she know her titties about to fall out? And then, sure enough, halfway through the video, there's suddenly a sensor bar because she in the note like, "I didn't realize while filming that my tit fell out." Like. <laughs> 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 wow yeah i am i found the correct shermy and it says here his first appearance is october 2nd 1950 his last appearance june 15th 1969 to never okay. be seen again he had a decent run but yeah he he faded out he, yeah. he was like, i don't know i think the only newspaper strip i my grandpa uh, he knew early on that I was super into comics, so he would actually um, collect the funny strips of the funny pages from the newspaper and leave them in a stack for me whenever I'd visit. So I would like go home with this like giant stack of like a month's, depending on how often I visit, either like a few weeks worth or a month's worth of funny pages, and I would go home and read them all. But like I only like two, but I still appreciated yeah. it. I really appreciated those stacks of funnies. I really liked Foxtrot as a kid. Um, and I liked Get Fuzzy. Yeah. Does anyone here have they read the strip, the peanut strip that features tapioca pudding? No. Oh no. my God. Again, so I didn't read pudding. peanuts. No, Charles Schultz used to be a fucking savage. Um, tapioca pudding is a very minor character in Peanuts who shows up. And is like introduced to the class as like the new kid in town. And she's all like, hello, I'm the new kid. My name is Tapioca Pudding with my name and my blonde hair and smile. My dad says we can make a million dollars. My dad is in licensing. My dad is in licensing. My face is going to be on t-shirts and lunch boxes. Did you know my blonde hair, my pretty smile is going to make us a million dollars? And as time goes by, it's like, you're like, wait, when did this come out? And it came out in 86. And it's like, Tapioca pudding is a critique of strawberry shortcake and comic character merchandising. And I fucking Why love it. Why strawberry shortcake? Apparently he thought strawberry shortcake was super tacky, I guess. Oh, but that's fair. It just has nothing to do with comics. That's why I... It was yeah, but I think this is probably commentary on merchandising in general. That's fair. Oh, because you, you mentioned comic merchandising. So I was like, wait. Yeah. Well, no. I wouldn't be surprised if he felt a little put upon to just put his characters on any old fucking thing that were yeah. presented to him no, like, no i definitely get that for sure yeah so I, I i like tapioca pudding tapioca pudding is fucking funny um i'm now thinking of super eye patch wolf's uh what the internet did to garfield video is this about gothfield no this is about i'm sorry john um oh, should be about gothfield Garfield is mentioned, but it's more about the existential dread that is Garfield. Um, <laughs> he, don't, I haven't watched that video, but like... Do you know about Garfield, John? I, I know about... I'm sorry, John. I know the video you're talking about. And then there was that other insane one um, where it was like 
all of those like reenactments that oh, they with did. The guy in yes. The suit? No, yeah. no, they they just no. Like, it was a, a live action reenactor of uh, it was Lasagna Cat is yeah. The guy um, in the suit. Thank you. That was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Where they like, it's just this like YouTube channel where they just re. Uh oh, audio cut out for you, John. Yeah. and they came back with this like survey, this like phone survey of people's like sexual histories that people just call in and give them this information and then there's this like five hour video of like garfield john and odie kind of just slogging through all of these phone messages about like people's like sexual history it's it, it's insane and and then the last one is john arbuckle's sexual history yeah. and then he rapidly ages and turns to dust and a lady miscarries a garfield yeah, monstrosity I think, I think <laughs> like, what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah. yeah i clearly need to look this up it's need, yeah is need the word <laughs> yeah. it's it's five hours well spent yeah. <laughs> um but yeah uh yeah, uh, that the, the, I just liked. Uh, basically, in I Patch Wolf's video, Spike he goes over um, percentage wise what it, type of joke is each Garfield comic. What is the most common joke in Garfield? Um, and number one is John Arbuckle sucks. <laughs> um, and then the number two joke is. Garfield is torturing John. Mm -hmm. And so that has led to a lot of fan comics slash fan art where Garfield is an eldritch monstrosity that is on this art in this reality solely to torment John Arbuckle. Um, hmm. Yeah, I saw see. those. They're... I just never got into them. I never got into them either, but it's interesting, like, that the reason why it works for Garfield um, is maybe because of, like, the two most common jokes are yeah. the torment of John Arbuckle. And to this day, I, I don't know, this is probably just a personal thing. What is? Uh, to this day, I'm still, again, I'm someone who didn't grow up with a lot of media, so, like... Mm -hmm. Of course, it would be we strange to me, but I remember being so perplexed by Bart Kira. Yeah, I thought that was a stupid idea. I will um, keep my thoughts to myself. Everyone was, like, super into it. Like, I'm not saying that people were wrong for being into it, but as someone who, like, didn't grow up on, like, most media that I guess everyone else has, I was just staring like, what is this? It's What is this? It's just, it's just two things, Amanda. Um, yeah. It's I just, remember that that exists, but I don't remember. Was it a video? It was a. It was a of... comic where they redrew every page of Akira, but with Simpson characters in it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's but, it. Like, we that's... had lots of friends who like made art for it and stuff, and like I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying like it was probably the most per one of the most perplexing periods of my life as a cartoonist mm -hmm. with cartoonist friends because I was just like. Maybe someday I'll understand this. Yeah, I, uh, I just, it, it's, it's on the big old list of things that just doesn't do a thing for me. And uh, if it does something for you, that's fine. Uh, but I, I looked at it. I'm like, after one page, I was like, yeah, I get it, and hmm. I was happy to leave it there. <sighs> yeah, I. Yeah, it's kind of like how, like, I think I mentioned on the show before that, like, um because of my lack of media literacy and not seeing a lot of things uh i just don't get a lot of references and it was uh uh but i did watch a lot of family guy mostly because that was during my period of insomnia so it was like watching adult swim twice was ha my replacement for sleep so i ended up fi seeing a lot of family guy and it wasn't until i slowly got exposed to media later in life that i went wait a second Family Guy's joke was just recreating that one-to-one. -one. Hmm. Yep. 
And then I would then see I'd see another thing like, wait a second, they just recreated that one to one. That was the joke. So yeah, it's like it was really funny to slowly realize like, like I never liked Family Guy, but it made me like even less in retrospect. Like they just recreated all this shit one to one. Like yeah, that's that 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 is the problem with Family Guy. Um, like or one um, of the problems. One of the problems. Yeah, one of the problems. yeah one of the problems. But it's like I just like the, without that media literacy, it's just that one particular flaw of it was completely lost on me because I just I I just as like I knew that that one song like one of the songs was a riff on uh, Little Shop of Horrors and I kept going there must be a joke here I'm not getting and then I finally saw Little Shop of Horrors with Kel and I was like no no there was no joke I wasn't getting they just recreated it but stupid yeah they hmm. just had a pedophile singer I just um, basically mm -hmm. gave it way too much credit I just I assume there must be a joke here Joke broadly defined. Yes. I, I guess I'm a charitable soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, My insomnia show is Eon Flux. Oh, I love Eon Flux. <laughs> I fucking... I just... Oh my god. I'm seriously... I'm gonna have like this moment now. It's... I am personally offended by what feels like MTV's very pointed attempt to forget they ever did animation. And... I, I don't know why that's happening. Like, it seems... Does MTV still exist? That's a semi-serious question. I'm pretty sure all these old networks exist, but their original mission statement has is completely yeah. irrelevant. Like, I, I think MTV is, like, game shows and shit now. I, it, I, it's a lot of reality shows, but, like, yeah. just the weird ones. It's like Teen Mom and stuff, right? I think yeah, so. Yeah, like, 16 and Pregnant. Um, yeah yeah but there was a period where literally some of the best animation on television was on mtv mm -hmm. and i i loved it because i was like oh my god this is like the dawn of a new era there's going to be so much good animation now but no it wasn't sustained it was a blip and knowing what i know now what i what i just assume might have happened was the executive who this was their baby this was the standard they carried they either moved on or were fired or just disappeared somehow and everyone else at the company just sort of like swiped the back of their hand over their brow and went phew that's over with and then just <laughs> threw it in the dumpster and left it there because it's like you have aeon flux you have the head which i'm not like a huge fan of but okay and I am assuming the only reason we even have a new Beavis and Butthead is Mike Judge must have like held on to the rights to it or something. It's just MTV like doesn't even want to care. It's weird. Uh, so I've only seen one episode of Aeon Flux and I unfortunately saw it at a very young age. And Which it, one? It was the one where two characters I think were swapping something via kissing. Oh, and I was tooth. so viscerally disgusted that if yeah. I would see it come on, I would like just leave. Oh, I, I love would just because like that was one of those things that would come on during the hours that I was actually like home alone because of when it came on. Like there were a few shows I could sneak mm -hmm. because I was allowed to be home alone. And uh, yeah. my little siblings got taken to like uh like sports and stuff, and it got became very apparent Amanda doesn't do the sports, and we're ashamed of her, so she stays at home. <laughs> um, so those are my golden hours to like I can watch anything, nobody can stop me. And uh, Aeon Flux got witnessed during those hours. That was mm -hmm. also when my family walked in on me watching Invader Zim, and it was a very specific episode where I was like, oh, they're never gonna let me watch this again. Oh, it was the episode. Which where episode? Z it was the episode where oh. Zim and Gur were trying to navigate the city, and Zim looked at the sun to try to like figure out which direction it was moving, and his eyes started bubbling and frying, and that was the <laughs> yeah. exact moment my family walked in the door, and I was just sitting there going, I just my heart sank, and I was like, Oh no, they're not. They're this not is going on the band list, isn't it? There's that other episode where he's just like stuffing himself full with of organs. Like, yes, organs. I love that one. I love like <laughs> such plentiful organs. Um, <laughs> just a normal boy. Oh, uh, so, God. yeah, like there, I was basically, as I mentioned on pre previous episodes, I wasn't um, supposed to watch anything that was either a non-educational or b 
harmless. Like we, they let us watch SpongeBob. That was as racy as it got. Mm-hmm. Um, anything spicier than SpongeBob was not allowed. Like, and we couldn't own VHSs or DVDs unless it was something we were going to watch every week because it was considered a waste of money. So we had like four VHSs we would just watch in circulation. I think it was like Lion King and Toy Story and two other things I can't remember. Mm. Mm. And then I would sneak anime because it was animated and they didn't know the difference. Yeah. When I was uh, young, I think I've told this story before, but I think it also is, it's, it explains things about me. When I was young, we still had, you know, blockbuster videos and, we this wasn't a blockbuster video we had bhs rental places and we went to a local place and my parents would do the thing where they would rent themselves something and then they would rent the kids something and they rented me wizards (laughs) and i was a small small child because it was a cartoon to be fair that had a very like inviting like woo whimsy cover yeah they uh they rented me Wizards, and I watched it. And I, much like my cousin showing me Akira, I was never <laughs> the same afterwards. To the point where when Lackadaisy dropped in, I think, late April it was, when Lackadaisy dropped, Ralph Bakshi. March. R- March? Okay, it March. Was like the last day of March, I think. Yeah. Uh, it... When it dropped, Ralph Bakshi wrote a fucking three-word sentence on Twitter and linked Mm -hmm. it. And the three-word sentence, no capitalization, no punctuation, was just, worth a look, link. Wow. (laughs) And I basically shit my pants for an entire day. It was (laughs) such an intense... The man who traumatized me loves my work. (laughs) Uh, It was such an intense, incomparable, senpai noticed me moment. That like it was something I never thought I was like I had not mentally prepared myself to be acknowledged by Ralph Bakshi that day. And it was I uh did yeah. you see Dan Olson's video about the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Um no, I, I admire the... Ralph because he was working with what he had. I well I also like um where they Dan Olson reads that quote that's him saying now they gave me an X rating for stuff that they do on The Simpsons. And it's like, no, what do you think they do on The Simpsons? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I have I have seen all his work and they do not do that on The Simpsons. So no. one of my yeah. key video rental memories actually ties back to an earlier subject, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, mm-hmm. That was, you know, my, the, 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 the anime, they had anime and my family didn't know the difference between like anime. Well, I mean, not obviously there's anime for kids, but my ki- parents did not know that anime could get higher ratings. So they would like, it's fine. Um, and they didn't have like every episode. They just had what they had. So like they only had one episode of Neon Genesis. And so, of course, I was going through all the anime they had. I was going to watch all of it. God damn it. And the only episode they had was The Hedgehog's Dilemma, hmm. which is the most disappointing thing to watch when you pick up a VHS with a cool robot on the cover. No, it is like, like, like two or three. I... I forget which one, but the episode is just Shinji being depressed and bumming around the city. <laughs> And I just uh-huh. remember being like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I was Where like, is I, the robot? I yeah. was like, this cover's so cool. And I plugged it in and I was just like, what? I did not uh, know you could make animation about people just being sad. See, now that I'm an adult, I appreciate that. But as a child, I was like, why would you my do cool this robot? to me? Yeah. Um, one of my uh, most prominent video rental me- memories is going before blockbuster killed all the indie vhs rentals Mm -hmm. um going into a video store while i while we're picking something out and i saw a poster for silence of the lambs and i thought the death's head moth was a bee and i was like why is it called silence of the lambs if it's about killer bees (laughs) yeah Oh, can I just say something really no. quick, and then I'm gonna let everything. You keep at, every time if you keep asking permission, I'm gonna keep telling you <laughs> yeah. no. The attention to d- detail in the new Spider Verse film is top notch. 
You can tell Miles is Afro-Latino by the simple cultural aspects he does. And you can tell Gwen is white because she has her fucking shoes on people's bed. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. Oh God! Okay. Yeah, I saw that one already. <laughs> Unfortunately, put it away. Okay. It took the sting out of it. It's funny. I've been inoculated against the joke. With apologies to my white homie. You better apologize to me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I apologize. Deeply again. offended. I'm deeply yes, yes. It's okay. This is how you people are, though. You get so offended over nothing. It's true. <laughs> John, what are what, do you have any formative rent VHS rental memories? Oh God, uh, there was that movie Life Force. Oh, it was like a sci-fi movie. Um, I don't know. It just like looked cool. It was super dumb, but it was about like aliens, <laughs> like that come to Earth, and they like assume the guise of like naked women in order to like (laughs) suck the life force out of unsuspecting men. And then like Patrick Stewart plays a priest to (laughs) us. I don't know. It was a mess. I'm looking Uh, this up. Yeah, no, it's, it's worth a look. (laughs) That's got a very cool cover. It's, Mm -hmm. it seemed cool at the time, but it was mostly just sort of, Mm-hmm. It's based on a uh, 1976 novel, The Space Vampires. Oh, yeah. now I'm interested. Um, uh, I um, another rental situation to go to bring it back to anime disappointments in Blockbuster. Um, I rented a vampire anime called Nightwalker that is so bad that I then bought it because like people didn't believe me when I explained how bad it was. <laughs> And I still own it. So when I tell people I own the worst anime ever made, I can prove it to them. Um, It's um, the vampire character like cuts his finger and turns his blood into a sword. But because of censorship, he actually like bleeds glitter. And then like a lot of it is like still frames with a voiceover. And it's like badly written on top of being badly translated and badly dubbed. So you get such wonderful lines of dialogue like, all this murder is making me hungry. Let's go get some food. <laughs> just just a train wreck all the way through. Um, there are entire episodes that are flashbacks, but you don't realize they're flashbacks because making another character model where they're in era appropriate clothing, that's too much money for this anime. So even though it's the 1700s, this character is going to wear jeans and a t-shirt. Um, because why update the model? Um, hmm. And it's, it's just an absolute train wreck in an entertaining way. All um, right. Speaking of bad movies, I, I'm not curious. Have any of y'all walked out of a movie? Um, I walked out of Wag the Dog. I don't yeah, know like what no that remembers. is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wag the Dog yeah. is, and stop me if this sounds a little too real now. Wag the Dog is a movie, what I remember of it is about a Hollywood director who is clearly a, attempting to invoke Coppola is hired by a politician to manufacture a global crisis for the news for him so he can retain the presidency. I see. Yeah. I walked out of it, though, not because it's bad, but I walked out of it because at some point it began, like, doing double vision thing on the on the screen like there were two birds i don't even know how you managed to do that but that's what it did and i got up with like 90 percent of the theater and walked out and demanded my money back and got it i bet yeah um i uh i never walked out of a movie but i don't go to the movies a lot um when Mm -hmm. it was either queen of the damned or episode two 
But after seeing it in theaters, I walked out and thought, that was not worth the money I just spent on it. And since then, I have been extremely selective about what movies I see in theaters mm. because I never wanted to have that reaction <laughs> to a movie again. Um, yeah, I haven't seen a movie in a theater for a very long time. And part of that is I went to I went to college in Atlanta, Georgia, as at a college called Spelman College. And um it's fine, but I didn't really connect with anybody there, like on a person like I don't talk to anybody I went to college with. And um a perfect example of kind of what it was like was that was when Disney was experimenting with releasing Ghibli films and uh, or Ghibli, however you want to pronounce it, films. And they had a Princess Mononoke that was playing in a way out of the middle of fucking nowhere suburbs movie theater. And I was really excited to go see Princess Mononoke in a theater. And I asked all my friends, like, hey, let's go see Princess Mononoke. And they're like, what's that? And I explained it. And they said, where's that? And I explained it. And they said, you're going to ride the train for two hours to see a cartoon. And like, I swear to God, the minute like I heard that, the, like the thought just popped in my head. It's like, I'm never fucking speaking to you again after graduation. <laughs> I'm like, uh, who the fuck? Are, why am I here? Like, I had like see, that vibe. And see, I, I'm majored in comic books, so uh, I had the opposite reaction. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, but... I, I, I was the person that was like, why would you, why do you care about Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull? Mm -hmm. Like, but yeah, um, I went and I saw it and it was great. And when I came home, I felt something. And to this day, I believe it happened in the movie theater. But uh, I did that move where I grabbed both edges of my shirt. I crossed my arms across my, my front and grabbed the edges of my shirt and whipped it out over my head. And a cockroach fell out. <laughs> and oh. so, yeah. And that put me off movie theaters for <laughs> a decade plus. <laughs> a cockroach fell out of my shirt. Wait, where was that? Uh, when I was in Atlanta, Georgia, I went and saw uh, uh, um, Princess Mononoke in the theaters. And I sat very still for two hours. Where I lived at the time did not have cockroaches. So it came with me. Granted, it could have happened on the train, but it I don't think matter. it doesn't matter. The, the brain association was made. Yeah. Nothing could be done. So I did not go see a movie in theaters for at least a decade after that. And I still don't do it very uh, often. I, um, I, I go, if it's a movie, I am a hundred percent certain that I know I'm going to like. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I did see the green Knight in theaters. Ah. Um, I did see, um, Jojo rabbit in theaters. Um, but like, it's like one maybe two movies a year like if that i average about one movie a year it's really just because i don't like the theater experience i don't like how yeah. loud it is and i don't like how big the screen is and i don't like how bright it is and i don't like that i can't pause it to pee <laughs> i just don't like, like the grandma. theater ex i never have i also have vision problems so like the uh -huh. bigness and the brightness of the screen like when like the ch like whenever like the the lighting changes in a movie i just feel blinded um because i have some light sensitivity it's why i also don't well, you'll notice like i'm really hesitant to drive at night i mm -hmm. don't see well at night i oh. just have vision issues so like the theater is just kind of altogether and unpleasant like do you want like bright lights shine in your eyes and then to be shouted at and then have the bass overwhelm the rest of the audience i just i don't like the sensory experience so i will but i will do it if it's a movie that i want to see asap but i don't want to wait till it comes out that's yeah. my thing mm -hmm. So like yeah. that's, that'll be Spider Verse this weekend. Spider Verse. Yeah, that's my philosophy with video games. I will until recently I would buy them on the day they dropped because I wanted to play them pure without anybody having written a wiki or done a ten hour playthrough or it just, must be pure. Yes, it must be pure. It must be pure. And I'm really glad I did that with Skyrim, but um now I don't trust AAA developers because they're all assholes, so I don't buy anything day one anymore. But with um, that, everyone, everyone. Yes. It is 10 p.m. It is. Get it over is. yourself. Yes. Yeah, so I am I'm, I'm ready to call it here if y'all are ready to call it here. 
11 where I am. It's past <gasps> my pumpkin. Oh, it's past my turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. And with that, I'm, I think I'm going to do my outro. Everyone, thank you so much for coming to our little talk with John Allen. He is thank published you. by Iron Circus Comics, among other publishers. We have published The Lonesome Era by him, which is fabulous and wonderful. And it's about a cat, <laughs> maybe, sort of. I don't know. I call it a cat. A little queer cat who has a crush on his best friend and his best friend is not queer. And he spends most of the book wibbling and concerned about how his breast best friend might react knowing he is being crushed on. His breast friend even. His breast friend might react being crushed on by another boy. You can you can buy it and you can read it and I recommend you do because it's incredibly sweet and charming. It's also a thick book. You could hit it's someone a, with it. It's, yeah, it's Miss Thickums. It's a big one. He mm. also, John Allen also wrote and drew a, a book I equally love. Another called, thick book. Another thickums called Julian in Purgatory, which is about a useless asshole who does drugs on his girlfriend's couch all day until he is thrown out and mm. gets caught up in all kinds of terrible shit that ends with a fatality. And I, it's all, once again, cute little cartoon animals doing it. And that's a thing I love. Um, mm. If you want to get those they are available pretty much everywhere books are sold including amazon but buying them from the iron circus site itself benefits iron circus and its creators most directly as for me i am spike you can find me on twitter at iron underscore spike and you can find me as iron spike all one word no spaces on pillow fort co-host spoutable hive social and where i'm currently most active blue sky Please go to ironcircus.com and behold my life's work. Please go to Lackadaisy Film on Twitter or just Lackadaisy on YouTube and behold Iron Circus's very first venture into animation. I'm Cal McDonald. You can find all my stuff at calmcdonald.com. There's too many social media sites. Um, sign up for my newsletter. I'll post where I'm at on there. Um, I make comics about gay werewolves in the future. Um, I also usually stream on twitch.tv slash Cal McDonald. Um, I didn't today because of new computer tech issues, um, but I will be back to it next week. John, do you have any closing mm -hmm. statements or anything you'd like to advertise? Uh, no, no. I haven't put out a book in a couple of years. That's fair. But you do do a webcomic. I do. I, I am serializing a very long, another very long book um, on Instagram right now, which will come out next year at some point. So, yeah. Twitter, awesome. Twitter and Instagram. Ohio is for sale. Awesome. And I'm Amanda. You can find the link to my website, amandalafrenay.com, in the description. That links to all my other stuff. I am going to sign off and go race hoverboards in Warframe. Oh, sounds fun. I am probably going to sail a ship in Sailwind. Boo. Uh, I'm going to play some Rim Rims. Um... I don't call it Rim Rims. It's that... <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> what are you going to do, John? I'm going to read a book until I fall asleep. Oh, <laughs> I wish that was my life. Thank you it for coming, everyone. It could be your life very 